Okay, thank you very much. So just a little bit of background on myself. I've been about 25 years uh, global consultant for Reuters Financial Services. I worked for a year uh, for Microsoft Financial People. And nowadays I'm doing a fair bit of consultation, trying to get the bank refocused, the, the way the world is moving forward, making sure that they understand the technology is coming up. And I do a lot of mentoring and uh, venture capital uh, work particularly at level 39, which is one of the largest fintech accelerators. Some of the, my claims to fame is that I helped uh, initially to, uh, transfer WISE, or call now the WISE Bank, to mentor them originally, and I did a little work with uh, Revolut through level 39. They now become unicorns. So I've got a little bit of experience. Of course, I've got my failures as well, but those are some of the great unicorn billionaires. So I'm very excited and passionate about the world of finance and how it's going to be changed, particularly driven by AI. But AI and blockchain, I mean, obviously we can maybe talk about that later on, are, are buzzwords. The, at the end of the day is what is deliverable to the customers. What will the customers see? And I think a fantastic bright future. Wow, what a good question. Yeah, so Web3, I mean, there's a lot of this uh, confusion. What is Web1, what is Web2, what is Web3? Now, Web1 was just passive way of looking at the internet, we just put download. Web2 is where we are today, where you've got centralized storage, like for example, your Google Cloud or your Azure. These are part of Web2, where you sort of store your information. In Web3, which is really, we haven't seen much of it, you don't need the centralized, we don't need big brother or big mother or big whatever. We becomes the storage of our information, our own proprietary information, and if I want to do something or interact with you. I don't need an intermediate, for example, a Visa or a MasterCard, or even, this is the shock, I might not even a bank. Maybe from my bank account, I can send my money to your bank account, which is under your control, which is your wallet. I think that's going to revolutionize. Think of all the unnecessary, I call them 1%, 2% unnecessary commissions that are paid by intermediates. That's why I even talk about we see so many uh, companies such as Visa, MasterCard, American Express, investing so much time on startups because they've realized that the traditional type of platforms are now going to be under threat. They need to come up with more innovative products. And one of the ways that I see basically trying to energize the, the, the board of my bank to really be aware of, in fact, I'm actually talking to them probably next week, is to be prepared for this. I'm not talking about, this is something that's not going to happen next, next week or next year. I mean, the things that I think we can maybe talk about, what I think that are going to revolutionize in the next year or so, short term, will be voice. And I demonstrated in my talk that I just came off the stage about Voice is going to be the new touch, not your, hey Google, uh, Alexa, do this, interactive conversations, which is called the chat. So I think that will be the main reason. You can just talk to your bank. Hey, bank, do I need to worry about any payments? Or I want to go to a holiday next week. Uh, can you please organize the flights for me? You know, that will be, and then they say, yeah, sure. I'm looking at that. Oh, Farsha, don't forget, you've got your payment coming up. That would be the fantastic way. I mean, that's convenience applying AI to the customer. And that's what we will see. Whether, whether it's the AI machine learning, that's not so much important. It's the implementing to the customer. Now, that's the challenges that we as the sort of bank people have. Who can provide the better seamless uh, services? So the other thing that I think that's going to revolutionize, and you talked about examples of uh, AI in banking, is these things called DAO. I don't know if you've heard of the. maybe some of your uh, viewers and things might have come across this. This is called the Decentralized Autonomous Authorities. Mind-blowing idea. These are like these intelligent agents, basically uh, a sub-company, an autonomous company that could be let loose under your supervision. Maybe your management, your top management could be stakeholders and that they can actually act, for example, maybe in the banking sector, it could be that they could actually go out and give loans to people in an autonomous way, in a structured way. You could then, maybe this agent can be told on what basis you're going to give loans, or to do a risk analysis based upon some other, maybe some sort of distributed risk analysis type of product. And it would then maybe then hopefully generate a certain amount of profit, sell the services to other distributed environment, and hopefully then send the profit to the management, whatever it is. And the nice thing is, and I talk about the example of one of the ways to look at these DAOs, a classic example that a lot of people talk about is a vending machine. In a, in a traditional vending machine, if you look at it, it's supposed to be a remote autonomous. You go in there, you put your money, you take out your stuff. However, the back end is that somebody has to go and pay the electricity bill. Somebody's got to be notified that, hey, the item's empty, so they're going to then go and physically get the order of the item and bring it in and then stack it all up. Some person's got to remove, some poor person, I should say that, and you know, you withdraw all the cash and then maybe put it into your bank account. Now, what happens if that agent can be all autonomous? 
So automatically it will then presumably provide a service. If it finds out it uh, needs to reorder things, it can maybe send up another API to another, some sort of distributed agent that says, please send me the, the items delivered over here. It can then, once it generates profit, it will send the profits appropriately. And the nice thing about this, and this is the amazing thing with DAOs, is that it has transparent and automated management structure Whereas I talk about like, in the vending machine, unfortunately we humans, we're dirty. We're confused, we get stressed, we get maybe tempted, we might get seduced, well, whatever. Some vending machines were actually, because of bad management, were actually dispensing drugs as well. Whereas you see that you don't know the structure. Whereas with DAOs, the control, the management is transparent. It's all on the blockchain. You know accountability and what it did for. So in some ways, you can actually see these entities of the future becoming more accountable. And, and more uh, clear in terms of its functionality. And the stakeholders will then make decisions in terms of how to manage it. So you're doing away with a whole bunch of human interactions. What does that mean from a customer perspective? It means that they provide, they, they get a better service at reduced costs. And that's the main thing is that I think it's something that you will never be able to stop now in the world because these potential platforms are going to be improving convenience and reducing costs. And the only things, I mean, uh, maybe sort of to answer your question, if I can probably pre-jumping uh, pre into what the question's yeah, got. No, no, what are the things that are going to hold it back right now? Because as I said, this is a five to 10 years perspective. I don't think happening next week. The problems we have is we don't have proper framework, legislative framework for these things to become alive. Um, and the other thing is credibility. People just don't trust these, these entities. But those things can easily be solved. You could have said, you know, when the first credit card comes out, came out, people didn't have the credibility associated. Electronic payment for a long time said, what's this internet payment bullshit? You know, I don't want this, it's all never trusted. I like to have cash. So you're going to get the same thing. And then you'll find that those companies and countries that enable this technology, they will succeed. Because we're now, and I always believe we're a global village. We've got Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, are all competing. Whoever can enable this technology will succeed. And that's you know, the classic thing is they build the roads and other people come and build their houses against them. So I feel very, very passionately we need to wake up and smell the coffee. These big changes are coming in a big way. And I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of it. Maybe not for me, but for my children and grandchildren. <laughs> I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Absolutely, smart contracts is basically part of these DAOs. I mean, the smart contracts, mind blowing. Um, and one of the things I, I love that with the idea of presumably, in theory, selling your houses, you know, you can actually use the smart contracts where you sort of transfer your property into them. And then they, well, once they get the appropriate money, then automatically the, the items are replaced. Using NFTs, I think these non-fungible tokens, which is a, quite a trendy term. And today they're associated with pretty little pictures and icons. But in the future, already now, there are some places in Silicon Valley that you can associate your property legally as an NFT, which you can store into your personal wallet that you can then give into a smart contract. And the smart contracts are already, there are some insurance companies in America that are providing insurance as a smart contract. What it means is the farmer who wants to pay this smart contract entity, it pays a certain amount of, let's say, insurance every month. And in return, it's guaranteed that, for example, if it rains more than 30 days, then it will pay up to, to him for damages, of course. How does the smart contract do that? It then has an oracle which connects up, for example, national weather or uh, you know, some, some well-known identity that, that identifies whether the temperature has, has rained or not. And that, that, now, now, that insurance policy, which could be managed by, by Dow, can now provide a service so much cheaper then the old insurance would have secretaries, support staff, big managers, you know, all that. So this could now be an autonomous, well-structured. Or the other one, the smart contract that might that come, is money back guarantees. Mm -hmm. And so you buy your goods, but you know you now automatically got a smart contract that you know if it's faulty under these circumstances, your money will be paid back. Not the hello, can I please get my item back? So these are just little examples of these smart contracts. These smart contracts will be the building blocks upon which these decentralized autonomous authorities would sort of work, work together within the blockchain which stores it. But don't worry about too much about the technology. It's just that what we're doing is that we're getting rid of unnecessary middlemen or middle women or whatever, middle middle people, middle entities, or whatever I should say, is that we just basically improve efficiency and passing on the cost saving to the customer, improving their convenience. And I think the world is going to be fantastic. It's going to be seamless. It's going to be brilliant.